Eu tenho imunodeficiência como variável com diminuição de GA e GG. Tenho uma diarreia crônica que não melhora. O que poderia estar causando isso? Yeah. So this is this question is uh, kind of interesting because this person is trying to link di chronic diarrhea with a common uh, uh, common variable immunodeficiency. Uh, most of the time they're not linked. But, I mean, I don't know of any situation of a common variable immunodeficiency with chronic diarrhea. But I can tell you what may be causing the chronic diarrhea. Now, in our modern world today, we have a lot of people who have reactions to food. And that it's not necessarily food allergy, but they have food intolerances. And many of these foods can cause chronic diarrhea. Also, if they have bacterial overgrowth, small bowel bacterial overgrowth, or what we call SIBO, they can have diarrhea. If they have uh, uh, some infections in their gut, they can get diarrhea. So when you're having chronic diarrhea, one of the major infections that causes it is actually candida, candida overgrowth. And so if you have taken antibiotics, and uh, years or uh, months later you're having diarrhea, it could be that you have killed your good gut bacteria and the candida is growing and that is giving you the diarrhea. So it will be important for you to see a doctor that is going to check you completely. And one of the things they will check, they check your mouth. Suppose you have thrush. If you have thrush in the mouth, that's a telltale sign that you have candida overgrowth. And then they can tailor the treatment to that, making sure that they're killing this candida that is causing trouble for you. So when I see people in my clinic who have chronic diarrhea, I, I approach it several ways. Number one, I look at food. Number two, I look at what is the composition of their gut. So I take them off certain foods, like gluten. I take, a, take them off corn. I take them off soy. I take them off dairy. I take them off sugar because candida feeds on sugar. So if I take them off those five foods, then I give them probiotics, good probiotics. I give them a prebiotic, and then I give them digestive enzyme. Sometimes I give them an antifungal. I give them fluconazole, and also I give them like metronidazole, because it could be that they have bacterial overgrowth in their gut that is causing the diarrhea. So by doing all of these steps, taking out the food that can cause it, uh, killing the bacteria or fungus that can cause it, and replenish the gut bacteria, they get good results. And I, I mean, for me, I think people who have uh, what we call IBS, irritable bowel syndrome D. So now we have, by definition, we have irritable bowel syndrome uh, C, which is constipation, and we have the irritable bowel syndrome D, which is the diarrhea, right? So if somebody is experiencing one or both together, then this is my principle. This is how I do it. This is how I treat them. I take them off the food that may be causing it. I replenish their gut bacteria. And then uh, we go probably a couple of weeks. If it's uh, any of those things doing it, couple of weeks, they're done. They're cured. They don't need colonoscopy. They don't need any of those things. Now, if over a month or so, things are not working and they're not doing well, then they can go see the gastroenterology. They can do a colonoscopy and find out what. Most of the time, when people are having these conditions and they go see the gastroenterologist, they do uh, uh, the colonoscopy, they don't find anything. They say, well, you don't have anything. So let's put you on, say, uh, lenses for irritable bowel syndrome or some medication to try to treat it when it could be food related, it could be fungal related, it could be bacteria related, it could be any of those things causing it. On top of that, we can do testing. So there are some testing out of, out there. Um, they're not uh, the normal two tests that we do to figure out about or bacteria over and parasite, right? So we do 
for instance, uh, um, there's something, something called GI effect test. And the GI effect test or GI map test. Those tests are stool testing that can tell us whether they have bacterial overgrowth or they have candida overgrowth or they have any of those things. And uh, once we, or they have parasitic infections, if they do, then for instance, third, what, uh, in a country sub, subtropical country like Brazil and stuff like that, there could be parasitic infection and nobody's really checking the parasitic infection that may be driving the reaction. So it would be important to look at all of those first before we connect this one to uh, common variable immunodeficiency. I think I've said a lot. <laughs> okay, no. I try, I try to explain with... <laughs> okay, uh, I try to explain uh, as a... I try to summarize, okay, right. your... your the whole lecture, right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just forgot the five uh, foods that you mentioned. Uh, uh, I have a, uh, gluten. Ele manda retirar o glúten. Uh -huh. okay. I have uh, corn. É, uh, milho. Mais, right? Uh, if you eliminate the corn, you have to eliminate dairy. Dairy, dairy, uh, dairy é laxinhos. Uh -huh. We have to do soy, eliminate the soy. Soja. And then you have to eliminate sugar. E açúcar. Yeah. Então, glúten, uh, milho... Laxinhos, soja e açúcar. Yeah. Dairy products. Out, and I, I do that, take them out from those foods, and then uh, I give them probiotics. E ele dá probióticos. And then I give them prebiotic, because the probiotics... E dá os prebióticos. Prebióticos. Bacteria, but the prebiotic is the food for the bacteria. So if you don't feed them, they don't grow. So many people... É, porque se ele não comer, ou as bactérias, se não, não tiver um ambiente favorável, Right. Elas não crescem. So many people take probiotic 100 billion, and when you check, they have nothing <laughs> because they're not feeding the probiotic. They're not giving them prebiotic. Okay. And then. Ele falou que muitas das vezes os pacientes não somente desenvolvem alergias alimentares, mas também intolerâncias alimentares. E essas intolerâncias alimentares elas acabam é, causando uma desbiose no organismo, ou seja, no intestino, né? Right. Fazendo com que haja um processo inflamatório intestinal e acaba havendo uma desbiose. E havendo essa desbiose, por sua vez, acaba causando inflamação no intestino e com um aumento do trânsito intestinal e levando o paciente, então, à diarreia crônica. É a explicação que ele dá. Então, ele tira esses cinco principais alimentos, né? Que na, na concepção dele, quando ele fala do milho, a gente tem que olhar para a realidade americana, tá? Porque lá, inclusive, tem uma... I'm, I'm going to explain about your uh, lecture... Right. About uh, agri uh, um, def uh, agricultural defense. Yeah, agriculture. Yeah, the agriculture stuff. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Uh, ele explica sobre o uso dos agrotóxicos. É, e esses agrotóxicos eles acabam induzindo, por assim dizer, uma intolerância alimentar. Né? Que não seria, por assim dizer, uma alergia alimentar à proteína do alimento, mas sim uma intolerância alimentar que um alimento simples, que nós não teremos intolerância, acaba causando. Então, não é o que o alimento faça mal, mas sim é um alimento com agrotóxicos que leva esse processo inflamatório no intestino e leva uma desbiose com uma perda da flora intestinal. Então, ele investiga bem, ele disse que poderia pedir, por assim dizer, é, caso haja necessidade, uma investigação completa de todo o microbioma intestinal, tanto bom né, quanto ruim, né, ou seja, na investigação de protozoários, como de ar, de ameba, na investigação de fungos, se existe uma quantidade grande de fungos é, ruins que fazem mal né, para o nosso intestino, que não são todos os fungos que fazem mal, mas existem alguns que fazem, uh, se existe uma desregulação da microbiota intestinal, então ele usa, se houver necessidade, medicamentos para eliminar esses elementos ruins e faz a reposição com prebióticos e probióticos para é, haver a colonização adequada e perfeita. Eu vou incluir aqui a minha, a minha visão também em relação ao paciente com deficiência comum variável. É, como nós uh, conversamos anteriormente, né, o paciente tem uma imunodepressão. Né, e uma das coisas que pode acontecer no paciente com deficiência comum variável é a redução do anticorpo da classe GA Uh, secretório, né? então e, e nós sabemos que o intestino tem a chamada de da classe GA 
ligada à peça secretória, que muitas das vezes é a primeira de corpo que se liga à macromolécula ou à bactéria ou a qualquer outro tipo de agente agressor e, e, e neutraliza. Então, o um paciente com imunodeficiência comum variável tem diminuição dessa primeira linha de defesa, que é a produção de já secretória. Então, pode ser uma possibilidade também de indução de intolerância, como o próprio professor falou, e também do aparecimento de alergias alimentares. Né? E as principais causas também de paciente com imunodeficiência comum variável é a infecção por protozoários, de ar de ameba, como mesmo o professor falou, ele inicia metronidazol para combater essas diárgias e amebíases, caso o paciente esteja com essa diarreia crônica, né? seja com imunodeficiência comum variável ou não. Tá bom? Yeah, and this, this patient should see probably a functional medicine doctor, functional medicine, integrative medicine doctor, because those people will be the one who will do the uh, different tests to figure out what is going on with them. Uh, they can see the allergy, certainly they can do food allergy testing because some of them have food allergy. And then that, they can rule that out. And if they don't have food allergy, they can then check all the other stuff. Ok, então esse, ele diz para esse paciente procurar um médico de medicina funcional, de medicina integrativa, para investigar essas questões de intolerância e alergia alimentar. Né? Uh, 